the current development of the Chinese automobile market can be described as blossoming with diversity. The quality and performance of Chinese-made cars can now rival those of joint venture vehicles. However, what many people may not be aware of is that the development of Chinese-made cars faced significant challenges in earlier years, and Geely Auto is a key player in this challenging journey. Geely Auto's achievements today are intricately tied to a pivotal acquisition plan. Back in the day, Geely acquired Volvo for a staggering $2.7 billion. Many initially thought that Li Shufu, Geely's chairman, was taking a bold and daring step, but upon closer examination, it turned out to be a game within a game. So, what's the story behind this intriguing acquisition? No matter how shocking you feel after listening to this story, it will not be more shocking than what Lee felt when he first came to the United States in the 90s and looked at the traffic on the street. At that time, he said, we should also build cars and sell them abroad. I'm afraid no one could have thought that Lee's interest in Volvo began in 2002, when the young Geely had just received its automobile production license. At a meeting of the company's middle-level carders that year, Lee suddenly came up with a shocking idea, we're going to buy Volvo, and we should make preparations now. He also proposed the famous V plan, V stands for Volvo, and all the people present at the meeting were confused. The Swedish car company, founded in 1927, is the proudest car company in Sweden and is the world's leading manufacturer of trucks, buses, construction equipment, ships and industrial engines. Previously, Volvo has competed with Audi, BMW and Mercedes-Benz in the market. Why is Lee so fond of Volvo? There is only one reason, Volvo is the best choice for overseas mature technology, mature parts and mature automobile companies. Its originality is strong, its safety gene is unparalleled in the world, and its air quality control technology and environmental protection technology in the car are world-leading. In that year, Ford suffered the biggest loss in its 100-year history, just as Alan Mullally became the CEO of Ford Motor, and he proposed the only Ford strategy, cutting non-core brands in a drastic way. This gave Lee an opportunity to become more convinced of his judgment of the global auto industry trend, that the global auto industry would face a new restructuring pattern. According to his research, Ford would sell Volvo sooner or later. In September 2007, Lee had a letter written in English expressing Gila's interest in acquiring Volvo which Lee signed and sent to Ford Motor Headquarters in the US. He soon received an official reply from Ford, sorry, Volvo is not for sale. In January 2008, during an auto show in Detroit, Lee met with Ford CFO through a public relations firm. He was given 30 minutes of his time. After listening to Lee's statement, he repeated their previous reply, sorry, Volvo is not for sale. In 2008, the financial crisis spread around the world. In the first half of that year, sales in the US market fell by 17%. In contrast, the Chinese car market was against the trend, with market sales rising by 10% over the same period. Under this background, after several debates and discussions, Ford finally decided to accept Geely's acquisition. In January 2009, Lee met with Bill Ford at Ford's headquarters. Lee told the story of his earliest dealings with Boeing and Ford, his pursuit of Volvo over the years, and his long-term plan for Volvo, which was recognized by Bill Ford and Alan Mullally. This trip to the United States has given Lee a peace of mind. However, although Ford is willing to sell, Lee still has to solve the problem of having the ability to buy. Lee wants to get the permit from the Chinese government to go out of the country for acquisition. In China, the environment faced by private enterprises in foreign acquisitions is particularly complex and difficult, and they are often questioned about the lack of capital and operational strength. Once again, Li was helped by the general environment of the auto industry. In 2008, affected by the global financial crisis, the situation in the global auto market was severe, which made several major state-owned enterprises in China, including Saic Motor, cautious about overseas mergers and acquisitions. Chang'an Group, which has a joint venture relationship with Ford and Volvo, also gave up further involvement after a brief contact. Therefore, after asking several state-owned enterprises one after another and getting negative answers, the National Development and Reform Commission gave Geely a pass. Since then, the difficult negotiations have just begun. On September 30, 2009, Lee ushered in a key point in Geely's acquisition of Volvo. Ford publicly announced that Geely had become the preferred bidder for Volvo. But for M&A teams, the task is far from done. What awaits them is more tense and intense negotiations around core intellectual property rights. 
The negotiation that impressed Zhao Fuchuan the most was about a hypothesis that suddenly occurred to him. In case one day Geely can no longer support Volvo due to various reasons, will Ford agree to sell it when it is time? How long is the deadline? As soon as Zhao raised this question, the people from Ford got very angry, you haven't bought it yet, why are you thinking of selling it? Let's not talk about it. Zhao said, when Ford bought Volvo 10 years ago, it didn't expect to sell it today. My assumption is equivalent to the prenuptial agreement you Westerners signed before getting married. Eventually, the negotiations changed from Volvo not being able to sell for 10 years to not being able to sell for 4 years, and being able to sell unconditionally after 4 years. On December 23, 2009, the day before Christmas, Geely and Ford simultaneously announced that they had agreed on the main commercial terms of the Volvo acquisition. In fact, in the acquisition process, Lee also faced a rather difficult problem, the trade unions, and one day in August 2009, the Chinese Federation of Trade Unions received a complaint from Volvo's trade unions. The Volvo union wanted the Chinese union to intervene to stop Geely's takeover of Volvo cars. Lee immediately took his team to Sweden and Belgium, where he visited all the union leaders and relevant government departments, as well as Volvo's factory in Ghent, Belgium. During the conversation with the union members, Lee was asked the question, many people are interested in Volvo. Can you describe in three words what is the advantage of Geely? Although he had drafted the question many times before, Lee was a bit caught off guard by the three words. Faced with many eyes resting on him, Lee had an idea and used the three English words he could speak that instantly captured the hearts of many union members, I love you. The president of the union at the Ghent plant immediately took the Volvo emblem and put it on Lee. About a month after returning from Hangzhou, 13 executives and union members from Volvo came to Gilis Ningbo production base. The visit went well, and Volvo verified Gilis capabilities on the ground and expressed satisfaction. At the evening dinner in Shanghai, many of them grabbed a photo with Li. Their basic attitude towards Gilis' acquisition of Volvo was, no objection. August 2, 2010, London, England. Volvo's handover ceremony was scheduled to take place at 10 a.m. local time. Li expressed his feelings in an interview with the French news agency Reuters on the same day. We have realized our dream of acquiring Volvo, but this is not our final plan, it is just a new starting point. He went on to say, we have reached the foot of a big mountain. I hope and believe that Volvo cars will be able to climb to the top. It took Lee three years to set up the Project V team in June 2007 and to officially complete the handover in August 2010, becoming the new owner of Volvo. For him, it was no ordinary courtesy to face the crowd and say that he had finally successfully completed the acquisition of the entire stake in Ford's Volvo car company. It is said that Li Shufu's tears flowed down like rain when he signed the contract. I bet my entire company and my life on it, Li Shufu said. Gilis' acquisition of Volvo cars under his leadership was also the largest overseas merger, an acquisition of a Chinese auto company at that time. Due to the time limit, this is the end of my sharing today. If you are interested in related content, please leave a message in the comment area and let me know. See you tomorrow.